So, yeah, getting this thing started. Mm. First of all, thank you for coming on here. Thank you for having me. How would you describe what ascending with M is all about? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that my channel is really an expression of myself and my my own spiritual exploration, maybe. The name Ascending with M actually sort of just dropped in one day a while back. So sometimes when people say it, I'm like, is that, is that me? Because I never really decided on it. It was just mm -hmm. sort of that guided. Um, and uh, it's the same with the with the videos that I create. It's uh, it's always most of the time very much spur of the moment. Something that um, spontaneous. I'm yeah. You could say that I I channel a little bit, or it's something that sh that's just sort of yeah dropping in for me as the clarity or uh, something that I'm observing from that more um, detached non-ego self kind of play and um and i uh i love sharing it um it's um it's actually it's actually just a, a like a, a kind of like spontaneous uh, the whole thing is a, it's a spontaneous desire to sort of just like share something so it's very unplanned, and the whole thing has been unplanned from the beginning, I think. I feel you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, how would you describe what exactly is being shared? I know it's uh, hard to speak about the unspeakable, but mm. you seem to like to do it, as you said. So if we could touch upon that, what is yeah. that all about? What are you trying to show the world? Mm. You know... This is like where my mind went just just earlier, and I was like, "I'll get to it, I'm sure." Um, mm -hmm. Basically, um, you can I kind of have to like tell the tell the story from the beginning. But I um, uh, in 2017, somewhere around there, I had like a spontaneous awakening. Um, so one day, sort of being uh, a person who was kind of into yoga, and I was doing yoga you know, a bit of meditation, but um, never really had a spiritual connection or it wasn't a part of my life. And then uh, um, literally one day in the shower, to make it short, a short story, um, my my consciousness opened and I saw things very differently. And of course it was in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a be beautiful experience and, you know, tears and the whole thing. And it was just that. Uh, you know, a very, very meaningful experience. And it, it changed my my whole uh, outlook on, on life and understanding of myself. And with that understanding that dropped in for me of, you know, understanding that uh, I'm not just this being, you know, I'm not just what I thought I was. I am also everything and I'm connected to everything and I can, you know, I can travel in all the different directions, you know. Um, it the the main thing that came to me was, of course, like this deep joy and love for for everything, and with that came this deep urge to want to share it with people. Firstly, want to understand it because I don't understand what happened to me, but also like. I have to understand this so I can share this with other people because it was the best thing that ever happened to me, you know. It's the good news. It's the gospel. Yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um so so you know, so that's what I'm attempting to to share in different ways, you know, the um the energy, the frequency or the the understanding that we're you know, we're, we're both and we're, we get to be this like human and have this human experience. And at the same time, um, there is this, 
uh, you know, they, they always, you know, call it like hidden in plain sight, right? Because it's yeah. right here and it's what we are. And somehow we just lost it, right? We, we forgot or, you know, and, um, and that's what I'm attempting to, to share with people in different, you know, many different kinds of ways. Um, and partly through my channel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, the true miracle of our being that goes beyond the confines of the body and the five senses, mm. the true interconnectivity mm. of it all. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that is um, priceless to be able to realize that, that, simultaneously we are the body of course we're we are the body the show goes on but yet we're everything mm. we're everything and nothing at the same time it's this paradox of our being that one can find and in that as you described is joy <laughs> ultimate joy how would you describe why yeah. that is joyous you know like figuring out that we're not just the body why does that bring you some kind of happiness for lack of a better oh. word where does that come from Mm. Maybe we want to do a little dance. I was like, oh, hey, so we can dance. Let's so dance a little bit. <laughs> um, oh, why is it joyous? You know, I think um, what comes to like, okay, wait, let me see. So, what I would want to say is, you know, I've studied a bit of uh, non dualism, the advice of Adanta kind of tradition, and they say that. Um, you know, the nature, our true nature is joy, is happiness. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, such an natural. Yes, exactly. It's the, um, it's the, it's the natural expression of what we are, you mm. know. Um, if I were to sort of tap into it myself, you know, it's <sighs> like it's the, to me, it's, the, it's always been connected for me to the heart you know, the experience of the, the the spiritual heart. And and once again, you know, the understanding that it's not just me, you know, it's not just this this limited body, it's everything. I am everything. So through that, you know, I uh, there's this natural love and joy that comes with that, I think, you know, the uh, understanding that you know, I am, I am this vastness. It's also the, the freedom that comes with that, you know, no matter if I'm uh, having this human experience and, you know, I've, I've been in situations where I've gone through like really deep pain and, and grief. And, um, and at times I've been like, how does this all, you know, like work together? And then it kind of dawned on me, you know, when, when we keep remembering, when we keep sort of shifting our focus back to, seeing that we are both say like the higher self and the lower self at one, um, you know, everything becomes, everything becomes beautiful because mm -hmm. we also understand that, it, you know, it, there, there isn't anything that is, there isn't anything that is limiting us and we are all the experience at one. And, um there's also this this deep acceptance that comes with it you know the the mm -hmm. human things that we struggle with get to be understood from a different perspective which just brings with it an, a, a natural acceptance i think um you know it's yeah. just the deep wisdom right mm. radical acceptance that's what i like to say it's radical yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and in that acceptance is that freedom, for sure. Mm. Freedom to, um, hmm, freedom to, I don't know, just freedom. <laughs> freedom for whatever comes up in our yeah. life. Whatever our life yields, it's freedom to just be with it, not push it away. Mm. There's a lessening of constriction in how we live, I feel. Knowing yeah. that we're not just the body, we're not just our suffering. That's what I feel this joy comes from is that it transcends our suffering. It doesn't negate it, right? It's still there. We still got to go through shit. Yet mm. it's just like a, mm, it's like a it's transcendence, but it's not a bypassing. It's still like you realize that's part of the human condition. 
and yeah. you work with it rather than against it you know knowing that we're not just the body like i said there's like something higher that we are and that we are here for as the body and in that mm. is the freedom to um it's just freedom i don't know i for some reason my mind wants to say freedom too but then it reaches like a end point of just just freedom that's it. Just keep it at that <laughs> yeah exactly it's, yeah. i mean that's the thing isn't it it's like yeah it's freedom it's you know it's it's being you know i often say being so i'm like because i sometimes go i'm like being you know something and then i'm like no yeah. it's just being you exactly know? and the human yeah being. no i told totally... you sorry <laughs> we're a human being yes exactly <laughs> truly um Sorry, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to sort of uh, tap into that, you know, what you said about the suffering, because I think, yeah, exactly, you know, the acceptance and the, like, the, um, I think there's like a natural, you know, it's like a natural opening to it. It's almost like opening into the suffering or the, you know, the acceptance of, of what is and, and allowing yourself to not push it away, like you said, you know, is that like bringing it in is, you know, is the practice that, that, I do that is very common in in non dualism as well. Sort of call it welcoming, uh, where you just sort of like you know you just allow everything to to move through you, to be you, to you know to not push it away. And it's so beautiful because it's the the it's the the clear experience of the suffering itself that kind of allows us to transcend. Right? It's mm, that mm -hmm. it's the yeah. inviting in that. That you know, like like that. It's like, yeah, I still feel the same way, but somehow my perspective is just completely different. And it's like I can still feel grief without being in suffering. I mean, yeah, you know, exactly. that kind of thing. And and yeah, the the that radical acceptance, the opening. The, yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm It's about mm -hmm. a lack of resistance. That's what I find. The freedom yeah. is a lack of resistance. So we don't resist the bs of our life we don't resist the pain as much as we can i'm not perfect i'm not gonna say i welcome it all in <laughs> you know what i mean i'm no, not gonna yeah. try and preach here but it <laughs> it is real it is real like i've noticed like if i can just analyze my life from who i am now as in gary you know who i am as this, this expression of gary and then who how i express say five ten years ago I'm just a lot more at ease with the suffering. The suffering hasn't really got any less. If anything, it's gotten more. <laughs> like, <laughs> it only gets more as we get yeah, older. But yet it's more of like how we deal with it. And as you said, it's like you welcome it in. You almost like you embrace it even more. And then that is how mm -hmm. we transcend it. It seems paradoxical because it kind of is. It seems a little contradictory, but that's the essence of it. And that is, yeah. as we spoke of, the freedom. The freedom of being yeah yeah, yeah. beautiful and stuff it's it's also where where you know our our lessons are right it's like wait when i don't avoid my suffering um what i find is that you know like then then you get like all these little like wisdom bits dropping in it's like oh uh, you know mm -hmm. it's like through the suffering that i actually do my curriculum as a human being and mm. you know experience the things that i that i am here to learn right yeah um, yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you that then. Do you feel this intuitive guidance that comes about in this essence? Something that just uh is like a teacher, the sad guru that guides you along through the expression of Emma that is just resonant, like you just know what's good for you and what isn't good for you in this human experience? Mm, I definitely when I had that that first very like big um, uh, awakening, um, one of the things that happened that was so life changing was that I literally could feel my heart and I could feel my soul in there, uh, you know, screaming at me. <laughs> at, you know, like you know, at first it was so so strong, and I I had the whole life, you know, and I ended up leaving that whole life uh, because. And I remember saying to my friends at the time that I was like, I don't feel like I have a choice. Like mm -hmm. there is no, like there, there is no choice there. There's only one way to go, you know? Yeah. Yep. And over time that feeling has become more and more quiet, you know, because I'm not 
so out of alignment anymore to whatever we want to call this, you know, soul purpose, whatever it is, you know, but, um, uh, but definitely like around that time, I also <laughs> realized that, you know, like surrender is such a massive part of life. And, you know, like the more that I surrender, the more that I, that I listen to the intuition or my heart or my feeling, um, you know, it's, I can I can say in hindsight now, you know, like it's taken me. I never would have been where I am now. I wouldn't have had the the experiences that I have had if if I'd listened to my mind instead of my heart, right? Yeah. Um, yep. So, so I definitely, you know, I definitely try, and often I feel that I know what my intuition is telling me. It's not always that I'm like, oh yeah, okay, let's go. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to do this. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it can be a bit of a process, but yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and, and I think to me, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's the, it's the flow of life itself. I think that, you know, there's not one person who doesn't have that, that connection to their intuition. Um, I think it's just like, it takes practice perhaps to hear it to, and like most of all, you know, because all of us are like, I know what my heart is telling me. Like, I know, you know, uh, but it's like, are you actually brave enough to listen? Because at mm. first, it's, you know, it's really hard. Like, it's, it's really scary, right? Yep. To like yep. do all the things that, you know, for me, that looked like doing a bunch of stuff that, you know, maybe I felt or thought that my, that my family wouldn't agree with or, you know, whatever, whatever, what, what one of my friends going to think, you know um but yeah i think i think it's just the it's literally the flow of life living through us when we when we allow it to you know when we allow it mm -hmm. yeah That's the key. surrender <laughs> yeah. is the key it truly is i speak to yeah. a lot of people a lot of different belief systems a lot of different uh points of view all together and somehow some way it always comes down to surrender <laughs> that's yeah. the essence of it all is just you really gotta get out of your own way and uh follow the way <laughs> and yeah. uh yeah that's it it's really that simple not easy but it is that simple you just have to surrender to your heart and let that guide the way and uh yeah sort of uh in that is a leap of faith as you spoke of you have, you sort of have to trust the process in that but as mm -hmm. you said too uh i don't know exactly how you put it but you found that there is no other way you figured out that like you kind of have to you don't have to we all have the choice to um to rebel you could say but yeah. if you want the the easiest way you could say uh you kind of have to there's almost like an obligation to follow the way and to surrender to this process this mm. this uh hearts heart filled living heart space you know this living from the heart you kind of have to once you have this understanding and this realization dawn upon you in the shower, and then you have to uh, you have to follow that because you can't see what you you can't unsee what you've seen, and um, yeah. yeah, it could seem daunting, right? It can seem a little scary for anyone that doesn't know any better. I understand that, but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It's worth it in mm -hmm. the end. Not in the end. There is no end. It's just a figure of speech. <laughs> but I think you know what I'm saying. It's totally worth, it's worth it to it. be able to follow this. Yeah, and it might be a little um, drastic in how our expression and our life changes, but it doesn't matter. You recognize that no matter how the outside appearance change changes, that that faith leads the way, that faith that you are going toward something greater than whatever the world could provide. That yeah. leads the way and that truly is priceless. And that I feel that now, you know, you, that never leaves you too. That's the thing is that faith um, it may dim sometimes, like we said, we're not perfect beings. We might forget it, we might get lost in the world, but it's always there. Like once you have that understanding, mm -hmm. that faith is always in your heart to come back to you, almost like a sanctuary. You know, there's something that is just like truly precious to be able to see because you don't unsee it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what you want to say to that. Just wanted to get that off oh. my chest. <laughs> Beautiful. No, I completely agree with you. And mm. yeah, like, I, I absolutely love what you said there, like with the, like, you can't unsee it, you know, and you can't, like, you can't forget about it. 
um because the, yeah exactly like you say you know sometimes um it might feel like it's further away or you know you're like lost in the sauce of you know whoa yep. what the hell you know <laughs> yeah, and, <exactly>. uh, <laughs> and i think yeah you know over time like i i remember i actually thought about the other day once again like this 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 first awakening that I had and and a while after that at first i was like in this bliss state for i don't know how long but and i remember the first time that it left me mm. the feeling and i was like i was so sad i was like i lost it it's not coming back you know mm-hmm. um but i think you know yeah you know over time you both uh learn how to find guide yourself back there you know yep um and also you know y- your fate just grows Mm -hmm. well exactly i think that's what we're all doing uh we all have that yearning back into this understanding Mm -hmm. truly we just get deconditioned from it from birth Mm -hmm. but it's in there it's in all of us i think every single human being has it in their hearts this yearning to return you know the call to god i like to say yeah we're all walking each other home as ram das says Mm -hmm. so it's just a matter Mm -hmm. of time for all of us to be on this wavelength and to be able to see it. Um, yeah. So that's the good news, I guess, is we're all going to get there eventually in some way, mm-hmm. some form. It may not look like it if you turn on the news, but I think there is a, um, how do I put this? There's a revolution of consciousness that's happening behind the scenes. And mm-hmm. I feel it when I come on here and speak to people and I just feel it within myself that something is changing and what's changing is the old paradigm, the old ways of ego-centered living is crumbling and making way for heart-centered living, which is our true nature. And that's the way Mm I, um, how do I put this? That's why I know it's an inevitability because that's really what we are. Like, as we've said, like you come to find out that's, that's our nature. So how, how long can we hide from our nature for, you know? Yeah. It's an inevitability. Like eventually we're all going to wake up to what a human being really is, which is just love. We're just an incarnation of love. And then at that point, who Mm. knows what the world's going to look like? It's going to be an alien world. Um, But that's like, that's just, I'm just entertaining that thought. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is our own path to that. But, you know, what a world it will be. It's just like, sometimes I sit down and I'm like, wow, this is actually what's going on here. It may seem a little over idealistic. I admit that. But so I'm with you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I think there are. Yeah, there's some people with me and on this wavelength, but I really do believe we're going to get there someday. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, that's what we do it for. I mean, that's what we're I'm not doing it for that reason, because that kind of goes uh, that's kind of like misses the point of this whole process. Like we, we talked about how it's like a spontaneous thing. Literally right now, I feel it's like a spontaneous speech, but. I can't help but mm-hmm. recognize that's what we're doing it for is um, paving the way for this new way of living for all human beings to recognize mm-hmm. that this is this is really what it's about, man. It's not about competition, war, um, you know, trying to look cool, clout, getting a bunch of money, materialism. Nope, that's just a falsity. And that falsity ultimately is what brings us to this essence. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. Totally. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. But um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Do you, Sorry, uh, did you want to say anything else? I'm like, oh my god, so much to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you something, but if you have something to yeah. say to that point, go for it. Oh, wait. Let me see if I can if I can get it back. Um, you know what? You 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 go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to take it down a notch and come back down to earth and ask you, mm. what exactly do you think we have to do to be able to see this? Because I feel as though that is the toughest part is for all of us to actually be able to see this. Because once you see it, as we said, you don't unsee it. Once you take the red pill, it's no going back. So mm. are there practices or modalities that help us um, allow this in? Or is mm. this just like a uh, act of grace that isn't really up to us? We just kind of have to. I don't know. Mm. So I'll preface and what I and give you my perspective. It's like 
I feel as though there's only so much we can do. We can meditate, have a sense of self-inquiry, but it's mm. not truly up to the being. You sort of just have to allow it. And when it happens, it happens. So it's a paradox. Again, it's like you're still doing something, right? There is still yeah. practices like yoga that we do. But at the end of mm. the day, it's not up to us. It's just some sort of divine grace that dawns upon one. So, yeah. Mm. What would you say to that? I got a little bit of chills just as you said that. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, I think um, on one hand, like it actually ties me back to what you just said and that what I wanted to say before is that, you know, on one hand, I think it's the frequency thing, you know, it's the vibration mm -hmm. thing. So like the more people that are, are like, I, I often speak about holding frequency I don't necessarily like the lingo that we sometimes use because it says, you know, some people are higher, some are lower. That's not what I yeah. mean, but it's just like everything is vibration, right? So um, the more people that that can tap into this this sense, this knowing and hold mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. the, the quicker it will spread, right? Yeah. And so that's what I wanted to say about what you said, you know, uh, this this like future, future view of hum humanity Mm -hmm. um yeah totally like and 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 that that is when when everyone is able to to hold this frequency or to understand this or however you want to see it um so i definitely think that one part is like what i have found for myself you know the more that i interact with people in my life where i'm where i'm uh, very intentionally at first and then you know it kind of becomes second nature i guess in a way but you know depending on where I'm at, what my mood is at and, and stuff, but, you know, like to hold the frequency and to, to remind myself when I interact with people, I also notice, um, I also notice people changing around me. Right. Yeah. And, and having a deeper with them, you know, so it's definitely something about the vibrational, um, inter interaction between beings that I think is, is really beautiful. And I think it's actually quite profound in, in, in anyone's kind of awakening or you know um on the other like yeah it's, it's a good question i definitely think i definitely think that there is you know i've been thinking about this like meditation you know when i went into non-duality non they kind of say you know like you don't have to do anything you just because, and and it's true you know one and on, on one side it's true because it's like we're already there. We already are the thing that you're looking for. You know, like it's not anywhere. You don't have to do anything. There aren't any steps to take, you know, and, and I really believe that on one hand. Um, and at the same time, most people that I know and myself included, I guess, um, you know, um, have done some sort of practice, you know, yeah. have done some sort of, meditation and it's not i hadn't done um i hadn't done any very in-depth you know self-inquiry or anything for me it really felt like it was like a grace of god because it was you know it was like that and i was like whoa like mm. what is this you know mm -hmm. um and at the same time um i definitely i definitely think that what we're looking for like the reason why meditation or yoga work um, or may work is, is because we are slowing down enough to actually pay attention. Yeah. And I think one of the things that is very important, and especially in today's society, it's actually like, what is your nervous system doing? You know, how much, because if you have all the thoughts running all the time, it's going to be so much harder mm -hmm. because what what I'm what I'm sensing and seeing for myself is that the more that I remember to be present and whatever that looks like and really what I like to call just slow down you know it's just like just looking around like being present with my own experience whatever that experience is i can be sitting on the bus it doesn't really matter where i am but you know um it's the ability to separate yourself a little bit from your thoughts a little bit from your from your emotion and from all these 
very direct sensory experiences that we have. If we are able to do that, the easier it's going to be for us to recognize that there is this, you know, the being back here that's like, yeah, this is where you actually are. You know, everything that you're experiencing is not you, right? Um, and I think, so, you know, like, really basic stuff like to me i'm like nervous system regulation uh being in nature doing whatever practice makes you just feel calm and into your body you know and then yeah like meditation like mind practice because it's gonna because it's gonna allow you to actually start to look and actually have like a perspective of uh what it is that you're looking for right actually recognize like whoa there's space between thought and thought right mm. like if you never experienced the space between your thought it's going to be very difficult to 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 feel the space that is everything and that looks at your thoughts right so mm. yeah yeah well said mm. it's a simultaneous play of um the paradox of our being to be able to see this, that there's nothing that you have to do, just be here now, right? We've all heard that, it's the cliches. But you don't realize that until you go through the practices of meditation. It's like there is something you have to do, but you don't realize you don't have to do it until you do it. Mm. <laughs> you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's uh, sort of ironic. It's sort of a joke. Sometimes in meditation, I just laugh. I'm like, what? <laughs> what am I doing? Life is the meditation. What am I doing? So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's sort of a joke. It's sort of, um, sort of some irony in there. So, yeah, the non-dualists are right from that perspective, for sure. But also, there, there is importance in having a practice. And that's especially, I think there's levels and layers to this thing. I mean, the non-dualists would say no. There's no levels and layers. It's all one. I get that. There's nothing to say. Words yeah, there's nothing to say. Nobody's not here. Real. There's nothing going on. I understand that for sure. I get that <laughs> 100%. But I feel as though speaking like that isn't useful to somebody that is just getting started on the path. Because those platitudes only become apparent when one has, has seen that. And then at that mm. point, if you have seen that, then there's no point to watch youtube videos about it so it's like so, <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like it's kind of pointless so i think yeah. it's the most yeah. important um service that we could do is uh provide guidance to people that are at the beginning of the path at the part of still at the part of doing that's still at the part of practice and having modalities to be able to see these non-dual platitudes within themselves and uh yeah. yeah i think it really just revolves around what you described as uh the great allowance being able to slow down and just see, just recognize, be still and know, as Jesus says. That's it. Mm -hmm. To really mm -hmm. just have some kind of regular meditation in our life. And it doesn't even take that much, I find. Yeah. You know, start off with five, ten minutes a day, 15 minutes, and work from there. Because the problem is, I mean, it's not really a problem in the absolute sense, but... I'll say it. The problem is, is that we're so caught up in the world and doing stuff. I got to be here. I got to do this. I got to look like this. Or you're caught up in the past. It's like, why did I do that? Why did it? you just have to find the point between the past and the future? And that's the present moment, another cliche, but it's true. And that only comes mm -hmm. through meditation. That only comes through one having the willingness to, to truly just sit and be with all of that and to just breathe. And then, yes, you will find these, um, these, these non-dual realizations within oneself and it will all become apparent at that point. But you gotta slow down. I would say that's a huge part of the, uh, the path, the pathless path is slowing down and just breathing, man. It's that simple. It's that simple, yeah. but it's, um, yeah. it doesn't seem easy, right? It could be daunting. Yeah. Right. And I like it. to, I like to also like think, think a lot about like, you know, w the way that I see it for myself, um, that what, what I keep coming back to is curiosity, you know, yes. mm -hmm. like checking in, like being actually curious about my own experience, you know, yeah. and I think that's what in, in some way, like non, some non dual teachers speak about as well, you know, it's like, can you, you know, just 
explore you know that's i keep saying spiritual exploration because i really feel like at the core of it that's what it is you know we're mm -hmm. we're we're exploring our own experience and and that's really how we also find our answers because that's also the thing you know all the answers are within us mm -hmm. so it's like yeah you know if you if you can if you can stop and it can even be you know something like you know you just have you can just this you know sometimes a meditation practice can also be like i'm doing something you know it's like <laughs> oh, i'm meditating <laughs> um but it's like just sitting like getting bored you know be bored you yeah. know just just something like that it's like opens you up to actually see see things that you might not usually see you know mm -hmm. yeah so. exactly mm. yep curiosity leads the way for sure yeah. Did you have any, when you were growing up, a uh, religious background or, you know, any fundamental spirituality? Uh, no, actually, not at all. Here, the dog is leaving. <laughs> um, she got warm, I think, on the blanket here. Um, no, Sweden is a very sort of, what you say, secular country. Oh, yeah. We don't... Yeah. Um, so religion is not very like central here. Um, and I would even say that I was like on the other spectrum of it where my mom is like very like anti-institution in a way in that sense. You know, so she was like, no, not church. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I always had, um, I always had a, a, a curiosity actually. I would go and sit in churches uh, mm. when I became a teenager. And I think, um, like even today, you know, like when I work with people or uh, when I do my videos, I very, uh, I work a lot and speak a lot in energy. And I think for me, like it, it's something that's very close to my experience. So I think, yeah, there was something that called me because I think uh, churches are beautiful places to be, you know. Yeah, when, truly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a good intention in, in the religious places. Yeah, but good intention. Yeah. Yes. I don't think we realize that until we have this realization of how beautiful um, religion can be and mm -hmm. in its pure essence, really what they're trying to say, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people I speak to have a classical spiritual upbringing in fundamental Christianity, particularly, and right. they get, they just get turned off by it because it's just, they're missing the point. And then mm -hmm. um, the curiosity leads the way usually follow a point of atheism because they realize that ain't God. And then following that curiosity, one comes to find out really what God means within oneself. And then they work back into the church, as you said. You know, you work back into a different understanding of what Jesus or all the other saints and sages are saying. So, yeah, that's why I asked that question, because usually curiosity is what gets one out of the dogma and into this I amness. Mm. Yeah. Totally. It was actually that uh, I was talking with someone about this just the other week. And I was, I was talking once again about this, this initial uh, awakening. I remember that one of the, one of the first thoughts I had after the like intense kind of experience was, I was like, I understand what the religions are pointing at now, you know, because yep. like I realized I was like, they're all pointing at the same thing. And it was like, yep. <laughs> this is the thing, <laughs> you yeah. know, and it's like, it's hidden behind a lot of, stuff but of course it's in in its essence it's um yeah yeah kind of what, i like to say all, all i say this for. pretty much every podcast oh sorry what did you say i was just saying it's it's kind of what we're all looking for that's it you know yeah we're yeah. all looking for it what i was gonna say <laughs> is um the truth is one and the wise call it by many names and there's mm. many many different names many different pointers out there and uh, yeah, they never do it justice. But when you find it within oneself, you can come to appreciate the pointers for what they are. Mm. Truly. Yeah, there's okay. something special about, um, I mean, I'm very recently reading the New Testament. I haven't really ever sat down and read. I've read passages here and there, but just sitting down and actually reading it. It's mm. a lot more special now that I feel this Christ consciousness within myself. I can feel the Christ 2000 years ago that was conveyed through those words. And it's like, 
it's just different. I would um, recommend that to everybody. I mean, you don't have to listen to me, but just throwing it out there. Go back to these texts that might have turned you off from childhood. If you have this understanding, mm -hmm. you know, just like be a clear reminder. There's something so special about Jesus's words in particular. I think for people in the West, you know, if you have this understanding, I mean, at the end of the day, you don't have to, you know what I mean? If you have this understanding, the books and the pointers don't really do much other than serve as a reminder. So if you want a solid reminder, though, um, dive into the New Testament and dive into the Gospel of Thomas. That's really, really good, the Gospel of Thomas. And uh, yeah, you'll come to appreciate them for what they truly are. And they're all pure. Religions are mm. all very pure and they're all like, um, I don't know, they can get a bad namesake for themselves because of what has happened in recent years and the crusades and stuff like that what people do in the name of religion but if you just let that go and realize that's the product of man man has uh. distorted its original meaning you'll be able to see how beautiful all of these practices not even practices all of these like just uh doctrines are for us and just um yeah you'll see that it's pretty much an infinite amount of ways that we can that we can describe this godly essence. But as we described before, it all has to do with surrender. That's what I think they all revolve around in one way or the other. It's all surrendering mm -hmm. to a, a power that's greater than us, greater than just the flesh, you could say. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, surrender and devotion, that is what the essence of the whole spiritual path is in its purity. Surrender and devotion to a, a, a greater power. Yeah, mm. I think that's how we started this conversation, to be honest with you. I'm glad we came back around <laughs> to that. It always comes down to it. Like I said, surrender, man. It's that easy. Well, not easy. It's yeah. that simple. That, yeah. That's the thing. And I, I definitely see that as well in, in my own kind of expression, you know, even though I might take many different like little rounds and it's really fun to explore different, you know, different ways of of being and like, uh, you know, you may find like these like spiritual laws working in your life and all of that stuff. And it can be, I find it really interesting to explore and, and play around with. Um, but ultimately it's always, like you said, yeah, it always comes back to one surrender, you know, like letting the, uh, letting like the, the person surrender to, to the greater self, right. In a yep. sense. And, and yeah, and devotion, you know, like the love, you know, the love that you like that, that kind of like the lower self feels for itself, like the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, beautiful. It sounds a little wonky. If there's anyone listening that has no clue what we're talking about, they're like, what? Is, these guys are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I get it. I, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> if you know, you know. I mean, so, and sometimes you need to hear the words and it's like, you know, one day maybe it just lands. You're like, wait a minute. I understand it now, you know? <laughs> yeah, they weren't so crazy after all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, one can think of surrender as in, um, in being still, as in a sense of passiveness in one's life. Like we're just, we're just chilling, surrendering, hanging out on the couch, hanging out with God. Mm -hmm. But it's actually quite contrary to that. Uh, what mm -hmm. I feel is a vitality in this expression of Gary with God to become a co-creator. You know, I feel this godly essence working through me. I like to say that um, I'm like an instrument or the paintbrush of God. And I just, mm -hmm. thy will be done type of thing. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's actually it's actually the opposite of passiveness. There is time for meditation for sure. But eventually that meditation just works through one, through work, through karma yoga, you could say. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's what's cool about it too, is it's not like you just retreat to a cave and that's it. No, you come back. You come back into the kingdom as Buddha did. You know, he became enlightened under the Bodhi tree. He came back into the kingdom to teach. So I think that's what's important. Almost like a, the, um, uh, what am I trying to say here? That's like part of the journey per se. It's like you have this realization, but then you bring it back and you share it. You spread the love a little bit. You spread the good word. And however we do it, that's the thing too, is like your, your way, Emma, we, we have similarities, but your way is different than mine. The listener, whoever's listening is different than mine. And that's the beauty of it. We all spread this same essence, the same realization, the same seeing, the same love. We all spread mm. it in our own way, in our own dharma. And that's what's really cool. You know, you can do things that I can't do, but I can do things that you can't do. And then in that, that's how we 
that's how we build the kingdom of heaven through our own um through our own circumstances and through our own skill set and uh that's the beauty of it it's just uh, it's like a great orchestra we're all playing the same song but we're, we all are different instruments in the <laughs> orchestra you know so uh, yeah i don't know i just think that's a cool observation that i've come to find and that's the beauty of it you know? mm. and and i think that you know it's uh um like it, it's it's following the excitement right and i think yeah you know that's how we kind of come to all these different expressions it's like what actually makes me feel happy and excited you yeah. know to do and then like it's it's like the um like little breadcrumbs right and you just kind of follow yep. them follow and the at the same time yes exactly and at the same time i think also that surrender you know like we kind of touched on earlier it's like surrender also tends to bring you into the situations that are actually the scariest for you and the hardest mm -hmm. for you you mm -hmm. know um i definitely i've had like such a big journey with this whole like sharing uh my thoughts and and being on youtube and like um i also run like workshops and and stuff like that and it's actually been super scary for me but it's like what my heart is like telling me to do you know yep. so i've i've gotten to grow so much you know through that as well but it's mm -hmm. uh it's the it's really the surrender i like to say i like i usually say there's like 90 percent surrender 10 percent action you know <laughs> i like that and like yeah. you, you surrender you surrender surrender and then all of a sudden there's this action that's kind of like comes up through you and it's like do this and you're just like oh, okay you know yeah and kind of just like um getting to be guided through through your action as well you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all said yep hmm mm. <laughs> just gonna sit with that and breathe yeah it's real i feel it 100 percent. and that's the only thing is uh you only figure out that this is real by having a direct realization within yourself there's only so many books that one could read there's only so many podcasts that someone could listen to at the end of the day you just have to take that leap of faith as we spoke of before and follow mm. the the breadcrumbs and that'll lead the way you know and um yeah man that's it just do it just do it <laughs> and be curious be curious what's like yeah. what's going on here really you know that's the key yeah be curious yeah. outside of the story because you know what is like um a lot of us uh we're prescribed stories of this is what's going on politics or some kind of false ideation of religion it's fed to us right it's uh, shoved down our throats from birth and like oh this is what's going on i am this i am that but mm. if one can um, get out of that trap you know if one can just be curious that maybe maybe nobody has the answers for me that only truly i have the answers within mm. then that is the key yeah you follow that i think that's the big uh that's the big uh, problem that's the that's the thing we're caught in right now is we're all living in somebody else's story that has been prescribed for us. So mm. if one can just see through that, even just for a second and follow what you saw, then yeah, that'll lead the way. Yeah. Mm. But ultimately, I think what the distortion and the illusions, the countless illusions do for us is get us to a point where we say there's got to be another way right <laughs> i think that's what our suffering ultimately does for us and in that way it's sort of grace is it gets you to a point of exhaustion and then through that exhaust mm -hmm. exhaustion you might get that glimpse you might get that glimpse with enough like oh you know almost like a put out a prayer like please god show me or or not even god just like yourself like you know deep within have that mm -hmm. sense of like uh follow that yearning amidst one suffering and then that will lead the way yeah so at the end of the day it's all for us i guess is what i'm trying to say it might be another cliche we might have all heard that before but at the end of the day this whole thing is all for us for our growth and for our betterment of our being and ultimately the realization of who or what we truly are at a deeper level past all of the stories and narratives that are put out there for us mm. it's all it's all for us it's all us <laughs> it's not all for us it's all us at the end of the day so yeah um yeah powerful I mean, stuff yeah 
I love I love what you said actually about like asking the question because like that's something that's actually incredibly powerful that people don't realize. But I ask like I ask all the time. I'm like, what is the like? What do I need on this? So what do I? And the answer will come to you. You know, like it's uh, yeah. that's the universe that we live in. So it's like if you actually if you really really want to know if you're like I really want to know my true self. Yeah, you know. If you hold that intention, it will happen. You exactly. know that that is my that is my true belief. You know, you might yeah. have to hold the intention, continue to hold the intention. You know, but it's like asking the universe, like show me. You know. Yep, that has to be the prime intention, right? Yeah, we're just yeah. running away from that. I think a lot of us want the the pleasures of life before we want to know who in what we are. True. Right. It's true. Yeah. So what you said on the suffering is so true as well. It's like we, um, you know, we have to sometimes we have to get to that like very extreme place before we actually look in the other direction, right? Yeah. You know, I think um, that's what's going on right now. It's getting a little extreme. <laughs> it, it has been actually exactly. for quite a while now. It's getting extreme, yeah. and that uh, yeah. that's only bringing us bringing us back home. I think uh, what's the saying? Exactly. Uh, harmony through conflict, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's what's happening. It's it's, uh, yeah, it's a guidance system in itself, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're suffering to know that it's like you're going in the wrong direction. Like this mm -hmm. is not the way. You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> yeah, that's um, the essence of karma right there. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Wonderful mm. stuff. <laughs> Wonderful stuff, Emma. Yeah. Oh man, I think we can probably start to wrap this up, but do you have anything you want to say or, you know, just uh, do you have any last words for the pod before we do? Oh, last <laughs> words. I mean, I really feel like we we touched on on uh, many beautiful beautiful things. There's so many things we can say and you know, there uh, there's an infinite way of ways to get there things to explore understanding of ourselves can be in so many different ways so yeah i don't know it's all love that's it yeah. it's all love, <laughs> it's all love. <laughs> there's so many things that we could say right infinite amount of ways <laughs> that one could flavor this up but at the end of the day none of it does it justice <laughs> that's the thing you know you, yeah that's the thing the words will never be enough yeah it's unlivable as they say yeah <laughs> well on that note mm -hmm. i thank you for coming on here this was an amazing mm -hmm. talk you're an amazing person and i wish you all the best thank you so much thank you for having me it's been really fun for sure yeah peace and love to you emma and peace and love to the listener thank you all blessings thank Bye -bye. you so much